Hi everyone, and welcome back to Learning Media Skills. And today we're taking a look at the Canon R50 camera, brand new. Well, I shouldn't say brand new. It came out uh, first quarter of 2023, but it's gained a lot of popularity. And I'm kind of thinking that a lot of people may have picked this up or got it for their uh, children for Christmas and uh, are just starting to use it and uh, might be having some questions about the menu options that come with a camera like this. You know, uh, manufacturers do their best to, um, <clears throat> you know, try and make the menu options intuitive but they don't always succeed, right? And so we're here to help you with the menus and uh, help you set up your camera to get the best results. Let's get started. All right, so you got your new camera in hand. You see that there's a little uh, button at the back that says menu and you're just uh, wondering, what can I do to set up this camera to get the best results? How can I even see this menu? Well, uh, if your camera has come like this, where the screen is not uh, showing up, um, what you have to do is open up this screen and reverse it like this and then flip it back. And now you can see uh, the menu options as they come up to the screen. And in order to do that, you first of all, of course, have to have the camera in the on position. So there's a little switch here right to the side. Change that to the on position and then go down to the menu options and some menu options uh, should show up here. Now, the thing to know is that the menu options that show up when you press that menu button will be different depending on where you have your mode dial set. Do you know about the mode dial? That's this wheel right at the top of the camera that has all sorts of symbols and settings on it. There's an M, there's an AV, there's a TV, there's a P, there's a green A with a plus beside it. Well, that's your mode dial. And if you have it set to the green A plus and press the menu options, you'll get a limited number of menu options to select and adjust. However, Notice this, try this, change your mode dials, uh, spin that wheel till you get to the M and then hit the menu uh, button again and you'll notice that all of a sudden you have a lot more uh, menu options to choose from. If you were to turn your mode dial to the, the what looks like a little camera on a tripod, uh, what that really stands for is uh, if you want to shoot video with this camera. And by the way, this camera does a great job of shooting 4K video. We'll get into that in another lesson. Uh, but just know that if you have your mode dial set to the video camera on a tripod here, the little symbol, and hit the menu option, you're going to get different menu choices. Uh, you'll have more options to choose from that are specific to shooting video with this camera. So just keep that in mind as you're working with your menu options. If you're trying to follow along in this lesson and you don't see the same menu options as I'm showing you, it's probably because you don't have your mode dial set in the same place as me. So watch for that. I think for the purposes of this lesson, I call it lessons, presentation, uh, you can maybe set your mode dial the same as mine, let's change it to the M and that will give us the most options to look at. In another tutorial or lesson or presentation, we'll take a look at the menu options specific for shooting video. Now I should say we're not going to cover all of the menu options here. There are so many. Uh, if you download the manual for this camera, you might notice that there's 800 and some pages to the manual. And that's primarily because of all of the menu options uh, that come with the software of this camera. So it's very extensive. Uh, if we were to cover every menu item, I'm sure that this video would be two, three hours long and you don't want that. So what we're going to do is just uh, cover what I believe to be the most important menu options that you should probably take a look at and consider and possibly change as you get started working with this camera. Of course, as you uh, 
become more and more familiar with the camera over the next year. And as you uh, take a look, a close look at the uh, manual that uh, you can download, here's, here's a little tip. You can uh, download that manual right to your phone so that if you're out in the park, you're out for a hike, and you have a question about your camera or about some particular menu setting, you can just call up that PDF on your phone and do a search and uh, find the exact answer to what you're looking for. So as you become more and more familiar with the camera, you'll be uh, able to take a closer look at some of these menu options that you might want to set for a specific purpose. But let's take a look at the generic ones, the most important ones I believe for you to know about as you get started with the camera. Now, how do we see that uh, menu again? Flip it to the on switch, change your mode dial so that the little white line here is lining up with the M and uh, then press the menu button. Now, if you don't get anything showing up when you press the menu button, it's because your camera has gone asleep and that's to save the battery on the camera. So just press down on the shutter uh, button and uh, then things will come alive on your screen and then hit the menu button again. Now, the first thing that you might wonder about is, I see a menu here, but how do I go from menu option to menu option? How do I navigate through the menu? There's several ways. One, take a look, uh, there's also a little wheel here. Besides the mode dial, there's a little wheel at the top of the camera. Notice what happens as you turn that wheel. You can see that you are navigating through your menu uh, to get to all of the menu options. Also, at the back of the camera, there's another quasi, shall we say, wheel. It's more uh, kind of like a joystick. And uh, if you kind of rub your finger around this little dial at the back, it's just below the info button. There's a larger wheel just below the info button. Just kind of lightly move your finger or thumb around. You'll see that there's little uh, extrusions, little points on the 12 o'clock, the three o'clock, the six o'clock, and the nine o'clock, if you thought of this as a, as a watch. And just maybe go down to the six o'clock. If your camera goes off, just hit the menu button again, or if that doesn't do it, hit the shutter release again, hit the menu. Now, if you hit the little six o'clock button or the very bottom part of your joystick, well, to navigate up and down, you use that joystick up and down. If you go to the three o'clock position, you're going to be working uh, through the menu as though you're using the wheel. The three o'clock and the nine o'clock position is almost like using the wheel. Okay, now there's one other way to navigate through the menu, and that is, remember, it's a touch screen. So you can point to any menu item. First of all, just uh, maybe point up to the wrench there, uh, and you'll see that it automatically jumps to the menu options that are associated with the wrench. If you want to maybe, uh, say, go down to auto-rotate, well, you can just use your finger. You don't have to use the joystick. You can just point to auto-rotate, and all of a sudden, you've jumped to the auto-rotate uh, option. So that's how you navigate the menu. Let's start making some changes. The first thing that I want to tell you about is how to format your memory card. We really should have done this in our last lesson when we were doing the introduction to the camera. Um, we showed you how to insert the memory card and uh, it's right at the bottom of the camera. There's a little lock there. You open that up and if you haven't bought an, a, a card yet, you need to go out and buy one because one did not come with the camera. And we showed you how to put it in, but we didn't talk about formatting the card. And it's a good idea when you put a card into any type of camera to format that card using the menu options of the camera that you're uh, using the card with. Because every camera will want to set up that card a little bit different way. And uh, so it's a good idea. The first thing that you do after you've put your card into the camera and locked it up, you know, close it and locked it up, is to go to the menu option and use your finger, because that's probably the quickest way, and go to the wrench. And uh, make sure that you're on number one of the wrench, and you'll see that the third item down is format card. So let's click on that. 
First of all, it's going to let you know that all data is going to be lost. So be sure that you've offloaded your card. If you've already taken some shots, you want to save those shots, offload those, because when you hit the OK button, all of the previous shots are going to be gone. And uh, the other thing that you might want to click is the low level format. Now, this is going to take longer, but it's going to set up your card uh, perhaps in a little bit better way than if you did not have that checked. And then hit the OK button. And uh, with the low level format, it's going to take a little bit. I see the progress bar here. All right, so now you have your card formatted. What's the next few things that we should take a look at? Well, uh, we can just keep looking here since we are here at the, at the wrench. That's what I call this symbol, the wrench. We can take a look at some of these. Select folder. You can create folders here to keep your uh, images in. If uh, you want to have separate folders for different days or different events, well, you can create folders here and then each of the photos that you take that day or at that event will go into that folder. Might make it easier, uh, be a little bit organized that way. File numbering. I like to keep that on continuous. That makes it easier to organize your images later on your laptop. Format card we've already looked at. Auto rotate, you want to have that on. I believe it comes by default as being on. Date time, if you haven't already set that, uh, here's a place to do that. Uh, it's good to know that this is here because a lot of times when you go on vacation, you might be in a different time zone and you might want to change that so that uh, you have the exact time each photo was taken automatically recorded to the metadata of your, um, of your image. And uh, so here you can quickly go to that menu option and uh, set it up for not only the correct date, maybe you've even gone to a different day uh, if you've crossed the date line, uh, you might want to set that up. All right, keeping it in the wrench, let's move uh, over using our joystick or wheel to number two. All right, so the first item is video system. Now, mine, uh, as it came, as we unboxed it, by default was set to NTSC. If you bought your camera in Europe or Africa or uh, Southeast Asia, you probably, it's probably showing by default as PAL. Well, you might be wondering, what should I have? Let's click on it and see that your two options are NTSC and PAL. Which is the correct one for you? Well, what this is referring to is the TV standard for your country. And uh, if you're living in North America or Mexico or uh, Japan, uh, you're probably going to want to set this to NTSC. If you're living in Europe or almost any other country of the world, you'll want to set this to PAL to kind of match up to the TV standard in your country. If you don't know uh, what TV standard you have in your country, you can easily find out by just Googling what is the TV standard for my country and list your country and, and you'll find out. The reason why this is helpful to have this correct is because it often uh, matches up with the electrical system of your country as well. If you're in PAL country, your electrical system is probably set to 50 cycles per second uh, for your lighting system. If you're in NTSC countries, your lighting cycle is probably set to 60 cycles per second. And if your system, if your camera isn't set up to match the electrical system of your country, uh, when you shoot video, it's going to kind of flicker. If you've ever noticed a flickering, that's probably why you don't have your video system set up to the correct uh, TV standard for your system. So just try, if you get that flickering when you're trying to shoot video, just change that and see if that helps. Mode guide, you probably want to have this on if you're just getting used to the camera. It will help you uh, discover the AI features of the camera. And this camera comes with a lot of AI uh, features. Artificial intelligence. In other words, the computer. If you want the computer of the camera to make most of the decisions for you, then uh, have these on because it will help you decide which computer function you want to use in any given lighting situation. 
And uh, so it's good to have the mode guide and feature guide on. If after you become really familiar with the camera and you find that distracting, well, you know where to shut it off. The beep. I like to have this disabled, especially if you're taking pictures at a wedding. You don't want the camera to beep every time you choose a setting or uh, sh use the shutter release. You don't want that beep. In addition to this, there are ways that you can even shut off the sound of the shutter. With these mirrorless cameras, there's no mirror that's popping up and down. And so you can actually choose to have no sound at all when you hit the shutter. And uh, that is also very helpful if you're in church uh, or at a wedding and you don't want anybody to hear you taking a photograph where you can set, we probably come across that option, that menu option to set that to be completely off, make no sound when you're taking a photo. All right, let's jump to three and see what uh, we have here. Screen viewfinder display. You remember in the, the lesson last time, we talked about how if you bring your eye up to look through the little eyepiece here, that the screen suddenly goes dark. And you might wonder well, what happened, especially if you put your hand over here, it goes dark. And what, well, what happened to my, my screen? Well, if we have it on auto too here, it's, you'll notice it says auto switching. And, and what that does is when your finger or your eye comes close to the camera, it's going to switch to the viewfinder, the eyepiece. And that's where you're going to see everything. And you come back and it auto switches to just the screen. Well, if you choose auto one, then you're going to have only screen. And by the way, if you are using your finger to make your selection and you choose a, a, a new selection, uh, and uh, you go back to and hit the menu button, you should know that you haven't really chosen that. Uh, in order to actually confirm that you want to make that change, let's say we're changing it to auto one, what you need to do, you'll notice there's a little option down at the bottom that says set, okay. And you can either use your finger to, uh, to confirm that that is the choice that you want by hitting it with your finger, or you can hit the set button on the little uh, joystick wheel here. And that will let the camera know that you really do want to make that change. It, it's your confirmation that uh, what you've touched there is what you really want to change it to. Uh, there's one other way to do it. Um, just go back in there. If you double tap an option, that will also confirm your selection by double tapping it. You need to be careful here. If you have uh, somehow selected viewfinder, <laughs> your screen is dark because what you've done is told the camera that you only ever want to see uh, through the eyepiece and you don't want the information or your image showing up on the screen at all. And it's going to remain black. Even when you go and hit the menu button, nothing's going to show up on the back screen. And you might wonder, well, what happened to my camera? Is it broke? Or it could be that uh, some child has picked up uh, your camera and fooled around with the menu settings and uh, you can't see anything on your screen. You're wondering, what's going on? Do I have to send this back to the store? Because I can't see anything on my screen. Well, it's because somebody has fooled around with your menu settings and chosen viewfinder here at this setting. Uh, and uh, so the only way to really get it back is to go to your viewfinder. And if your camera is, is gone to sleep, you need to press the button like we've showed you, the shutter release, and then touch the back menu option again. And now you see your menu options. You need to go into your screen viewfinder display and change that from viewfinder back to either auto one or auto two. Or if you know that you're never going to use the eyepiece because it's such a poor quality uh, little TV monitor and you can't really get a tell whether you're getting a good focus or not, and you know that you're never going to use the eyepiece, well, you could set this to option four there, the screen and select that or confirm that by hitting the set button. Now, you're never gonna see anything in your viewfinder anymore. So if you know you're never gonna use that, you might as well set it to that. And uh, 
then everything is going to show up on your screen. All right, let's uh, move on. What else do we have here that we should uh, take a look at? You can adjust your screen brightness. You have to be careful here. I would probably leave this at the manufacturer's setting. About the only time that you'd maybe want to make an adjustment there is if you're really shooting out in bright sunlight and you can barely see the screen, well, you can maybe make some adjustments there. As long as you're on auto mode anyway, the computer's making all of the decisions for you in the way of exposure and you'll probably be fine. Let's go on to four, touch control. Um, you can maybe make it more sensitive there if you want. I, I'd probably just leave it on standard. What do we have for five? Five gives you the option of resetting all of the menu options to the manufacturer's default settings. Battery info, that can be helpful. Uh, you can uh, take, a ch take a check and see where your battery is at as far as uh, being depleted. How, f how much do you have left in your battery? So that's good to know. Copyright information, you have the option of setting up if you're the only one using the camera and you want to have your name show up in the metadata of each image or video clip as being the uh, creator of that image and you want your image and video to be copyrighted with your name on it, well, you can actually set up your, your name and that will be written to the metadata of each media, whether it's video or uh, uh, photographs. The firmware, Canon often updates the firmware. So if you've had the camera for six months to a year, you might want to check online and see uh, if Canon has uploaded new firmware uh, for your camera. And that way you can take advantage of the new updates that Canon might have uh, created for your camera and get more capability out of your camera. Uh, I often check that uh, for all of my Canon cameras because sometimes between the first release and a year later or two years later, the camera can uh, have much more functionality and capability by simply updating the firmware of the camera. So that's where that is if you want to keep your eye on that. All right, from here, let's go to the camera. You can use your finger to the very first uh, menu at the top of the screen where it's a little picture of a camera there. Let's jump straight to there. Your first option here under camera number one is image quality. And here's where you can actually choose the quality of the images that will be saved to your memory card each time you take a photo. This doesn't have anything to do with video. It's all about photos. So let's go in and see what our options here are. Uh, there's two basic options. You can shoot in RAW, or you can save your image to a RAW format, or you can save it to a JPEG format. You'll notice there's another option there, HEIF. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later in this lesson. Uh, but right now, it's, I believe, set to JPEG. So if you choose any one of these options here, you're going to be choosing a quality of JPEG that you're saving to the camera. All JPEGs, you should know, have compression. And so even if you select the highest JPEG option here, the image that you're saving to your card is going to contain some compression. So if you want the highest possible quality, then I would recommend that you have one of the RAW selections uh, selected. And how you make sure that the RAW is on is that take your wheel and uh, just move that one until the first RAW there in the middle is bracketed with the red. And in addition to selecting that, remember you have to save your selection or uh, confirm your selection by hitting the set or OK button or double tap the RAW in order to save that. And once you've double tapped it, uh, notice uh, it comes back and you see that the symbol says RAW plus the largest JPEG. Why would you want to have both selected? Well, if you're kind of brand new to photography, you might not know how to work with the raw images. There's, some, there's a little bit of a learning curve to know how to work with raw images on the computer. 
So in that case, you will probably want to have both selected. And that way, you'll be able to easily work with the JPEGs, but also have the option of the RAW files, which will be better quality than the JPEGs. Even if you're not wanting to learn how to use RAW images right now, two years down the road, you might want to learn how to work with RAW images. And uh, if you have it set now for RAW images and you're saving those uh, to your computer, it will give you the option of down the road being able to work with the raw images. And there's so much you can do with the raw images that you can't with the JPEGs. So it's good to shoot in raw, have that option set on, but also have the JPEGs there uh, so that you can use them right away today. Now, what if you know that you really only want to use raw images and you don't want the, that JPEG? I, that's the way I shoot, I only shoot in raw. Well, then take your joystick and hit that nine o'clock button and you'll see that it moves to the little dash there. So now when you confirm that by hitting the OK, now you'll see that you're only shooting in the raw format. And uh, if you know how to work with raw images, if you know how to correct those in Photoshop or Lightroom or some of the other software that's available out there today to work with raw images, and you know how to work with them, I would say probably the best option is just to shoot raw. In most cases, most cameras. There's a little caveat here with this particular camera that I've heard about. I haven't actually experienced it yet. I'm told that this particular camera is a little bit slow at writing to the card. And so if you know that you are going to be shooting sports and uh, so you have a lot of action happening in the shot and you want a particular, you want to make sure that you're getting a particular still shot halfway through the motion, well, there are settings that you can make for your camera to shoot continuously so that if you hold down your shutter release, it's just going to go and take about 20 shots. And then you can go through them and pick the, the exact one that you want. However, the trick is with this camera, because it writes a little bit slower to the card than some of the higher end Canon cameras do, you might want to, in that case, change it to JPEG only. And that way you'll be able to write more still images per second to your card without it uh, uh, using up the buffer. All right, let's move down. Still image aspect ratio. Well, you see that you have four options here. By default, I believe it comes uh, th um, three to two aspect ratio. Say all you ever do is Instagram and you want those square photos, well, you would set that down to one to one. If you know that all of your photographs are going to be just dropped into a video and you're using the horizontal video, then you'll probably want 16 by 9. And then you don't have to do any adjustment to the photographs when you're editing your video because they're all going to be already set in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. 4x3, if you want your images to be more taller than, than more than width, but if you want uh, to have more width than height, then uh, keep it at the 3x2. Okay, I'm just going to keep mine set at 16x9. Oh no, this is for Joshua's camera. Let's set it back to 3x2. That's kind of the more standard uh, ratio for images. Flash control, we'll maybe talk about uh, the flash in another uh, lesson. The, uh, the, the camera does come with a little flash, but in most cases, the flash will ruin your shots. And so I don't recommend using the flash unless it's a bright sunny day, perhaps, and it's noon and the sun is hitting the top of the head and you want to fill in the face so it's not harsh, dark shadows. Well, if you're outside, the flash can fill in the face a little bit and it doesn't really ruin your photos as much as if you're inside and it's dark. Uh, the flash can really destroy your image. So we recommend keeping the flash down. And as long as you keep it down and don't lift it up, the camera actually is going to tell you, lift up the flash, lift up the flash in a lot of situations if you're in a darker room. 
but I recommend don't. It's better to let the computer of the camera decide uh, how much ISO gain it needs to, to make to get a decent shot in that lighting situation. You'll probably end up with a, a shot that looks better than if you raised your flash and used your flash. We'll say more about that in another lesson. So let's keep moving on. White balance. For shooting, in most situations, the computer will make a pretty good decision uh, by keeping this set to auto white balance. That's what the AWB stands for, so you can leave it set there. Maybe in a more advanced lesson, we'll talk about uh, custom white, how to set a custom white balance in any given situation. I think everything else here is okay. As it comes by default, at least as you're getting started. Uh, let's keep going through here. The drive mode, what's that? Okay. <laughs> There's so many different ways that you can get to this screen, but uh, here's one. You know, if you want to set it on a tripod or set it up on some books so that uh, you can hit the shutter release and then jump around and be in the group shot as well. Well, here you can set it up to uh, take the photo 10 seconds after you have uh, hit the shutter button. And there's other options here too. If you just want to shoot one shot, uh, you can set it to shooting one shot. If you want the high speed continuous that we're talking about and get those motion shots, well, you can choose that. You can also set it to two seconds. And, and people might wonder, well, how would you, why would you ever want to set your camera to two seconds? That doesn't give you enough time to jump around and get into the shot, right? Well, the two second option can actually help you get a more steady shot when you're at a very slow shutter speed. If you're shooting in the manual mode and your uh, shutter speed has gone way down to like a tenth of a second and you want to try and get a, a clean shot even at tenth of a second, well, you should know that even just pressing down on the camera, pressing the shutter speed gives you a, a little bit of motion and you're not going to get a clean shot. But if you have it set to uh, two seconds, what you can do is be able to press down on the button, but hold your camera steady and you'll have a better chance of getting a clean shot even at a tenth of a second. That's just a little tip. Uh, the next one, silent shutter function. We were talking about this earlier. You're at a wedding or you're in church, you want to take a photo without making any noise. Well, because this is a mirrorless camera, you can set it to uh, take photos without any sound at all. And that's kind of nice. Uh, and here's where you would set that. Uh, just turn that on to silent shutter function. Hit the set button. And now when you take a photograph, it's uh, not going to make any noise at all. All right, uh, probably one more item we should take a look at on this page, and that is release shutter without card. Uh, by default, this is set to off, and that's I highly recommend you just leave it to off uh, unless there's an extreme situation where you've forgotten your card at home and you want somebody to see how the camera works, then you could turn this on. But I really recommend that you leave this to off because what can happen is that you may have forgotten to put the card, the memory card, back into the camera after the last time that you were offloading your shots to your computer. You know, you may have uh, forgotten to do that extra step and take the card out and put it back in the camera. And you're out on your beautiful hike or on vacation and you're uh, taking photos. And it looks like you're actually saving to the card because you're seeing the image at the back of the screen. When this is turned to on, uh, you will take a photo, you'll see it at the back of the screen, you can review it, but it's not actually saving to anything. And you can get back home at the end of the day and go to get your card out to offload all of your beautiful shots and there's no card there and you haven't saved any of your images that day. So I highly recommend that you keep this to the off setting. Touch shutter disable. Well, here's an interesting option. Because of the fact that you no longer have to look through the viewfinder, uh, it opens up a whole new uh, option for you of being able to uh, take photographs 
with your finger just touching the screen uh, rather than taking your finger and uh, hitting the shutter button. Let's hit the enable button and see how this works. Uh, make sure that we've got this set. Yep. And uh, let's go back to taking photographs. And notice now with this enabled that you can point uh, just to the screen and it takes a photograph. And uh, that can be really handy, especially if you have it set to focus where you touch. So that if you've got a, a group of people and some are in the foreground and some are in the background and you want to be sure that the person in the background is the one that's in focus, well, you just take your finger and point to the person in the background. It not only takes the photograph, but it first focuses on the person in the background and then takes the photograph all in one motion. So I'm going to leave that enabled. That is a sweet feature for these mirrorless cameras. All right, our next option here is image review. What's that all about? Uh, this is a good one to know about and where to find this on your menu options because you'll probably want to change this from time to time depending on your situation. Let's tap into it and see what our options are. By default, I believe the camera comes where it's the, the review duration is set to two seconds. Let's open that up, tap on that again. You'll see you have five options. You can have this set off uh, or set to two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds or hold. What's the right one for you? What's it all about, first of all? Maybe we should say that. Well, what it means is after you've taken your photo, your image is going to show up on the back of the screen. And if you have it set to two seconds, after two seconds, it's going to revert back to the image uh, that's kind of coming through the lens so that you can get ready to take your next photograph. So if you're taking a lot of photographs, you probably only want to have this set at two seconds or maybe even off. And that way, you've, you're, if you have it set to off, you're never going to see the shot at the back of the screen. You're, and you're always going to be ready to take your next shot. Uh, if you want to have the option to look at your shot a little bit longer and, uh, and see that you really got what you wanted, then you might want to have it on four seconds. If you want to be able to show it to people, uh, you might want to try eight seconds. And if that's not long enough, then put it on hold and uh, hit OK to confirm whatever option you want. And that way, if you have it on hold, then the image is going to continue to stay on the screen. And that way, if you want lots of time to have it up on the screen to be able to show people it's not going to disappear on you. You've probably had that happen to you. You want to show somebody the shot you've just taken, and by the time they come around to the back of the camera to see it, it's disappeared. <laughs> and so if you have it on hold, it's always going to stay there until you've shown it around. And uh, then when you're ready to take your next shot, just uh, press down on your shutter release halfway, and uh, then you'll be able to see uh, and get ready for your next shot. You'll be able to see what's coming through the lens of the camera. So if it's on hold. The downside of having it selected to hold is that what can happen is you can take your photograph, uh, set the camera down, or put the camera in your bag and forget to shut it off. And the next time you go to get the camera out of your bag, your battery is dead because having the screen on is uh, depleting your battery. And so if you don't have any extra batteries, you're done for the day. If you ever want to uh, review your shots, of course, remember there's a little button down here with an arrow. You press that and you can see your shots for as long as you want to. If you want to go back a few shots, you, you, you swipe the screen and you'll see all the shots you've taken that day and be able to show anybody who wants to see them the shots that you've taken that day. So. Um, you don't have to have it on hold in order to be able to show people the shots that you've taken. Actually, I think that probably does it for today's lesson. Uh, you'll see that there are a lot of other options here. Um, the next main menu is uh, all about uh, your autofocus. I think for the most part, you can just leave these at the manufacturer's settings and be fine, especially as you're starting out with the camera. The next main menu is all about your playback, if you want to make adjustments as to how you 
uh, review your images, how you protect them, how you can erase images. If you're trying to free up space on your card, you can rate them. Uh, there's so many options here to, uh, to view your, your images and, and media. The next main menu has to do with um, connecting your phone by Bluetooth to your camera or other devices, tablets, maybe even laptops, so that you can control your camera with another device. And that can be kind of handy if it works. I haven't tried it out on this camera. I have not had really great success with Bluetooth on Canon cameras. I have to be honest with you. I have a $10,000 camera and the Bluetooth on it does not work uh, with this phone setting. I can't take shots. But if it works on this camera, that's great. We'll test it out and I'll let you know. Because what you can do if that works is that uh, you can um, download an app for your phone and set your camera on a tripod and rather than have it on the 10 second timer and jump around and be in the shot, you can have your phone and very discreetly release the shutter of the camera just by tapping your phone and that can be very handy. Um, but uh, like I say, I haven't had the best results with some of my higher end Canon cameras for that feature. They say that the Bluetooth, sh or the shielding of the camera on some of these high end Canons is so strong that it, the Bluetooth connection, it, get, it drops out. But maybe with some of these uh, entry-level cameras, that won't be a problem, and that'd be great. I'll let you know how that works, or you can try it out yourself. And we've kind of already gone through most of the settings here for the wrench. Uh, the next main menu has to do with customizing. And also the star menu is all about, uh, at least on most Canon cameras, is how to set up your own custom menu. All right, well, I believe that does it for today's presentation on uh, the menu settings of the R50, at least those initial menu settings to get you started with your brand new camera. Uh, if you found it helpful, be sure and subscribe to the channel because we'll be releasing a number of uh, lessons on the R50. There's so much more to dive into in the menu uh, settings of the camera, especially as we talk about uh, optimal settings for shooting video. Uh, there's um, lots of information that you can have showing up on your screen to help you take better shots uh, by using the info button, having it on or off. There's the quick menu options. There's so much to cover. I think what Canon has done is taken the latest artificial intelligence and added it to their software and dumped it into this camera because there's just so many options. As I mentioned, the manual to the camera is over 800 pages long. And so there's lots to learn about your new camera to get the best uh, results as you take video and stills. So be sure and come back. We'll have lots more on this camera. And if you haven't already done so, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that little bell so that uh, YouTube will be sure to let you know each time we release a new video uh, lesson on the R50. That does it for today. We'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.